Hello again, everyone. This is uh, our example uh, number two. And uh, in this example, we'll uh, try to uh, present some more features of uh, ANSYS. And what we'll do, we'll do a similar uh, problem like we did last time for a uh, building. Uh, but in this time, uh, we'll try to utilize uh, some other concepts. They, uh, they might be new for uh, for you for now, but uh, they are also very helpful in our uh, modeling. So basically, we'll use a kind of a CAD system, if you will, and we'll uh, draw some shapes, points, lines, areas, and then we'll ask answers to create a finite element uh, mesh out of those uh, geometric areas and lines, and that will uh, constitute our building. Again, I prepared a little uh, Excel file to start with as my uh, first module. So as you can see on the left of your screen in here, these are the items, and they're pretty much similar to what we uh, discussed last time. For example, number one. So what I'll do, I'll just copy uh, some part of this prepared file in here, and I'll explain uh, what I have. These are the normal introduction for any uh, program or any model. And as you can see, as I'm scrolling down on the Excel sheet, basically I'm defining what I call a key point or a key node. So by defining these key points, I can copy this file and place it in the input bar in ANSYS, and I'll just hit enter. Then I have my uh, nodes, not nodes now, but key points, as you can see in here. So these are similar to the nodes in sense, but these are key points. They are not element nodes. Uh, as of now. The next thing that we'd like to do is to create some lines representing the columns and the beams that I have in this building. To do that, we'll introduce a command which is L, and L simply stands for a line, and in that case, the program will assign the line numbers itself. I have no control about uh, giving those uh, line numbers. So basically that line uh, will connect key point one to key point uh, one zero one. And then I can repeat that for all the columns and the beams I have. So I'll say copy. And again, I'll go in here and paste that so I have my uh, lines, as you can see. You can have a plot also for where you can plot the numbers for both the key points as well as the lines. And if you plot multi plots, then you can see uh, the key points, the number, the their numbers as well as the lines and their numbers. So I can uh, take those numbers out now and I can look into this uh, direction. Uh, what I need to do now is similar to what we've done before is to copy uh, those key points so I can generate uh, some other lines and uh, eventually some other areas as we'll see uh, later. So I go to my preprocessor and I will also copy these key points. So I go to modeling and now I'll copy key points. Again, I can pick them up by a box like this. And 
in this, I want to make these only like uh, three story or a couple of stories building. And uh, the increment again for the key will keep it like last time 12. And the increment of the key points, I use uh, 100. And once I do that, then I develop the, my other key points for this structure. The next step will be uh, to also copy uh, those lines as well. So basically, I can pick up those lines and I'll do them in two steps. And although it's not necess necessary at this time, but, but anyways, I, I'd like to uh, introduce it. So I already defined these element types and everything. So I'll just put these into place while I'm generating this. Although later when we go on a mesh, we also can actually adjust this. So I'll just change them to that for now. And I'll pick up lines to copy. I'll take box. I'll surround the line at what I want to take. And I'll say OK. And I need three copies, including the first one. And this would be the 12. And the increment of the key point is 100. And again, the program is taking care of the numbering of the new lines. So that's why I didn't have an increment for uh, the line generation itself. So I did that for the teams, if you will. Again, although it's not necessary, but let's just like keep it consistent so we remind ourselves that for these columns, I want everything to be with the different material that I assigned. And let me pick them up again, lines. As we did last time, this is kind of tricky. So basically I can reset, I can take a box. And even though I'm picking these top lines that I don't want, I can go back and unpick them. And I'll do the same thing. Then I have all my uh, structure like this generated with key points and lines. So you can continue from this point and basically you can end up with a similar model that uh, we did last time for a skeleton uh, structure for a building. At this time, we'd like also to add uh, a concrete slab uh, to this model so it will give us a more realistic representation of a building. To do that, I want to create some areas. So to do, or to create the areas, and because this is a 3D now, I can get rid of the numbering to start with. I don't want uh, those numbers in here while I'm, I'm picking my areas. And the, I can also work only on this one floor, uh, develop the areas for this one floor, and then from that, I can uh, copy those areas to the other two floors as well. So let's select entities, and that would be lines, and by number and picking, and that's from full set. I go to the box, and I pick up these. Uh, lines and I can say plot lines and I give them a 3D so I can start generate my areas. So basically I can generate the areas and I'll choose to be arbitrary areas by lines and I go counterclockwise so that the direction of this area would be and the vertical positive y sense. If not, 
then we can go back and actually switch the normal. So now I develop two areas and I'll con continue this process. And I'm just picking the lines that define an area for this big one. I have to go around with all the lines that are there and I have all my areas like this. I have the areas and uh, I know that there are two more roofs that I need to develop, so I go to copy. This time I'll copy areas and again I just pick them up with a box and say OK. And again I want three times of those areas. Delta Y is always the same for this. And the increment of K was 100, it's still the same. And I say, okay, now I have my building. And if you select everything and block everything, then we have our columns, beams, and uh, slabs, as you can see in this picture. So far, this is not a finite element model. It's just a geometry that represents a model like this. So basically, from this geometry, we can create a mesh or a finite element mesh. And here we can assign our attributes. So basically, for all the areas, I have a shell element and material number one, a real constant one, and a type one. I'm using shell 63 in this case. So that's good. Then I can also pick up four lines. I don't want all lines to have the same attributes. So basically I can pick up the lines that I want to give them a certain attribute, and these would be the columns, like this. I'm trying to stay close to that column so I won't pick up any other items, which I did. So I can go back and unpick those little guys that actually I don't want them in this set. So that's basically, I'm picking, then I'm fine. And for this column, I want the attributes to be those attributes number three, like this. And finally, for the beams also, I want to give them the attributes of four, so I pick them like this out of the whole group. And remember, because this actually is a front of you, but all other beams in the background parallel to these are also picked up. So we say, okay, and for this one, we'll have items number four. And I'm good. Now, let's control our mesh. So basically what I can do is to give a size for those uh, elements that I am choosing. So I want the global size of the element edge to be about 0.5 foot. And that will give me a very coarse mesh, a very fine mesh, uh, excuse me. And once I have that, then I can go actually and mesh uh, the areas in a free format. I can talk about map meshing later. So basically, I'll choose all the areas. And also, I'll mesh the 
lions. Look how dense this mesh for the shelves are. Now I can plot everything again, and I can also mesh the lines. So I choose all these lines in here, and I say OK. And once I have that, then I have my mesh looks like this. If you want to plot the nodes, you can see how dense they are. You can plot the elements. And then you can give them also colors, as we discussed, based on the material color, which can signify uh, what is what. You see the red for the columns and this blue for the beams as before. And these are the uh, slabs. Once my model is set, it's back to what we do best. And that would be apply displacement, displacements and loads. So again, we'll just choose a very simple type of loads. For this one, we'll just apply displacement. And I should be careful because the elements are too small in here. So I'm trying to stick to the very bottom uh, nodes so that I won't pick up another node above. Or I would have made it easier for myself, if I just zoom on this guy and load the nodes, and I can see that I pick them correctly. So I say OK, and I fix all these points as such. And the next step would be to uh, add some loads. The simplest load is the gravity, again, in the global direction with the density for each material is already defined, I choose acceleration of one because I multiply by the specific gravity. If you have a mass density, which is the specific gravity over the gravitational acceleration, then you have to put the gravitational acceleration in here. So I have that done. Then I can just look at my structure again as a whole, and then I can plot everything basically. And the next step would be to go to the solution module and issue the command solve. The solution is done. Once the solution is done, we can do all uh, the, the things that uh, we need to do. Uh, we plot the results, we plot different shapes, and say like this, or I can do a contour so I can see some colors and some differentiation, and I can pick here also either the form shape only or with the undeformed. Here I noticed that all the deflections looks okay, and there's continuity in here which means that the program actually, when assigned meshing for the shell, it also assigned a common node with the beams. So you don't see any gap in here. If that happens, I'll tell you what you need to do to fix those gaps. If actually the nodes for the line are not matching the, load, the nodes for the areas. So this is the deflection uh, based on uh, this graph in here. Still a small deflection uh, based on the own weight of the structure we have. We haven't applied any other uh, loads that might include that deflection. Uh, then I can do what I did similar to the last time. Uh, I can have a copy of uh, this graph in here. Uh, click on this background to turn it white, so I won't use much ink if I, I really have a hard copy, and so forth. So basically, uh, this represents now a structure which has, which has the uh, slabs engaged with uh, the 
uh, beams as you can see. Now, because actually I asked the program to make the elements as a very small uh, element type, then I can go back in here and pick up those E tables that I talked to you about. I can copy them instead of like adding one by one. I paste them here and I can go now and to check. You'll see that actually I defined them already. So basically, if you uh, want to plot some of these uh, element table, the table is, as I said, already defined. Then you can go to plot results, line element results, and for axial load, we can choose this one and seven, and we have this axial forces uh, plotted. Now for the bending moment, because as I said, I have so many elements already defined because my mesh, I just choose like 0.5 foot, uh, very dense mesh, then the bending moment looks more like the familiar bending moments that uh, we're accustomed to. If you want to give it a little uh, increase of size, we can change the scale. So these are our bendings. And similarly, in the other direction, uh, that would be 5 and 11, and that will give me these uh, maximum bending moments on the columns. And if I want to look at the stresses in the slab itself, I can go to the, the nodal solution and uh, look at the component in the x direction, and I can also look at the component of uh, the stresses in the z direction, and I can also look at the stresses in the y direction, but these I expect them to be zero because that's a shell element. So those stresses actually are perpendicular to the shell uh, will give you a zero. So with that, this is basically another way of uh, modeling our building by using some of the capabilities of uh, the program itself. Again, if you have any questions about uh, this example or the example before, uh, we can uh, discuss it next time on our regular lecture time. And also there's one example which uh, in the book, and I'd like you to try it yourself and then we'll go over it as well uh, for a plate to actually simulate a plain strain, plain stress type of a structure or a connection. And uh, that will be uh, parallel to our mathematical, if you will, discussion of those elements next time. Till then, be safe and thank you for uh, listening uh, and take care. Bye.